you look at it from here, it's just, it's amazing. You don't see the crime on the streets, you see the trees, the normality of, of the place. I don't think Peckham gets a bad reputation. It's nowhere near as bad as people seem to think. I work as a doctor in Whitechapel and it's a bit difficult sometimes, I find, to sort of be free with your face. It's not necessarily that you're worried about people judging you, but sort of you think people may think you're judging them. So it can be a difficult thing to share and be open about. It really has helped me become more centred about who I am, more proud of what I am and, you know, really happy to talk about the fact that I'm a Christian, I believe in God. When somebody else who doesn't, who doesn't know me as well as my friends do, when I speak about the faith, they really start, they, they, they kind of judge. Hi, I'm Fred and I'm 16. I'm Sarah, I'm 18. <laughs> I'm Nathaniel, I'm 20. I'm Benjamin, I'm 11. I'm Manu, I'm 7. I'm Jackie, Granny, 72. Um, I'm Joshua, <laughs> I'm 15. We live in a very difficult neighbourhood. This is the North Peckham Estate. Um, I've taught in various schools and learning support units and pupil referral units, so difficult children. The state of society, especially around here, is a concern to us with the violence and the robbery and the drugs and so on. But really our faith in that situation is a help because it encourages the family to stick together. I would say my biggest concern as a father of somebody who wants to pass on the faith is to be in myself somebody the children want to follow in the faith so to present the faith as something beautiful. Um, okay, so here are my friends from church. I'm sure they have a lot to say. I studied at the Brit School and it was quite a controversial school. Everyone was quite free to talk about what they wanted and express themselves and dress the way they wanted and express themselves through creative art media. And I found it liberating to like speak through my art and do religious pieces. Hi, my name is Owens. I went to the London Oratory School. I did study science, which um, uh, sort of contradicts what the church goes, uh, talks about. However, I always try to find links between what, the, what God says and uh, what the science says. And I think that keeps actually strengthens my faith. When it comes down to sort of this kind of age where there's like relationships, there's um, possibilities of falling in love and sexuality and things like this, it's very good that the church is able to give um, a word for them to be able to um, understand how to maybe be careful and how to respect their bodies and use it as a temple of God. I've been a Catholic, born a Catholic in Cameroon in West Africa. When I was then uh, became a member of this community, the um, New Catholic Communion Way, I have learned quite a lot. I have learned quite a lot. And now I can really boast <laughs> to my friends and colleagues at work. My dad was a non-believer some year, a few years ago, quite a few years. And now he believes in God. He's a big man. That's what I, I've always thought that way about him. And well, since he started believing in God, and I re he's a big inspiration to me. So what I want us to do is to think of the 20th century, yeah, so the last century, and the things that affected what people wanted to look like. At the beginning of the last century, there was something you could get arrested for. There was such a huge issue about, and people were having real, real problems with, which was what? The... So now, what garment is out there that's causing all these troubles? That's very controversial. That countries are thinking of banning. Oh, their head The burqa, the burqa. The age we live in now is exactly the same as 100 years ago, yeah? We've got the same things going on, all this difference. So now we have this veil. Do we think that somehow religion will affect what we look like? No, but the thing is, women wanted to wear trousers. I don't think everybody wants to wear headscarves. I think now everyone is, is just wants to accept everything. Right. Because in a multicultural society, we're just taught to accept this, accept that, accept. Mm. So now all these things are coming in. Mm. 
with no, his court tail. Yeah, like, if they want to do it. If they want to do it, it and it's not hurting anyone else, no big deal. deal. First of all, I'd just like to say that I'm really inspired by the fact that a young man like you um, has got the guts to do a documentary on bullying and particularly around the area of faith because that's an area that a lot of adults um, hesitate to you know, have a discussion around. Do you feel it's difficult for somebody of a, of a religion or faith to stick up for themselves? At this moment, I, f I feel as if the Muslim community is the one who are being targeted because of the fact that um, there's so much negativeness about radicalization and terrorism and all these sort of things that people just associating terrorism with Islam and you know that's just not the case. Actually talking about religion, talking about faith, talking about your background, talking about what's important to you, can you actually then begin to see what we can do to, to, to sort of work together and to understand and, and exist together sort of in, an, in a harmonious way. In your experience, what is the worst type of bullying that you've come across? A young Hindu boy um, who was actually bullied because other people thought he was Muslim. Um, and he was targeted at school, he was beaten up, um, he was spat at. Um, he didn't want to go to school anymore, um, played truant from school, um, and thought about taking his own life because he was being targeted by a group of bullies at his school. I, for instance, chose to send my children to um, non-faith schools, you know, um, because I, f I felt that they needed to be in the mainstream and understand the culture of Britain. And talking to my eight-year-old last night, and she, just out of the blue, was saying to me that um, two of her friends at school went on to say to her that, oh, you know, Muslims are bad. And she said that, you know, um, she went and informed one of her teachers, and the uh, teacher didn't confront these young girls. She just said, oh, they don't know what they're talking about. My 15-year-old, who wears hijab, has had her hijab pulled off in the playground and you know it was actually done by people who were supposedly her friends. I am uh, completely against hate crimes. Uh, I'm for, uh, I encourage every youth to live uh, with every community in peace and uh, to live in solidarity and to, live ev uh, to love everyone. When I came to school here I didn't speak a word of English and so I was bullied because I didn't speak English. Um, on top of that, because my origins are Italian and it was just after the war, we were also hated because we were the other side. I have grandchildren and they're mixed race and I see what has happened to them at school. It's not been totally negative, but certainly a difficulty of identity. A, being able to identify which social and race group they're in, which peers they associate with, whether they're accepted or rejected by this group or another group. We want to make sure that our mosques preach Islam in its true spirit and in its true letter and the leaders of mosques are people who have proper understanding of Islam. And I'm not very learned, I will tell you. Somebody said to me, what are you exactly? I said, I'm a Jew. They said, what sort of a Jew? I said, I'm an ordinary Jew. <laughs> they said, what sort of a Jew? <laughs> and I said, I'm an extraordinary Jew. <laughs> and that's what I am, I'm an extraordinary Jew. And we're all extraordinary, we're all extraordinary people. So it's a very strong Christian idea that dialogue with other religions will prevent hate and will prevent racism and that that is an excellent thing but it will also shape and inspire our own faith. Our meeting today is a sign of hope that increasingly people of different faiths are coming together to work for a better society. Om <laughs> Setting, the peace at the end of the day is getting nice and cool and you're sitting there, imagine yourself sitting there, he's 
picking up the sand, he's putting it through his hands, and he's talking to his grandson, and he says, Grandson, there are two wolves in your body. One wolf is full of envy, greed, hatred. The other wolf is full of love, friendship, respect. But Grandad, which wolf am I? And the Grandad turns around and says, you will be the wolf that you feed. Do you have anything to say to inspire the youth nowadays, especially those who are in conflict because of their faith? They are our future. They are the future of this country. And they are the future of the whole world. If they have a vision of bringing unity, cohesion, love and peace through their own actions, their own role within the communities they live in, that will really make a tremendous difference in the future of the mankind. I'm Natasha and I'm 17 years old. My biggest conflict with my faith is not judging people and knowing that um, forgiveness is essential, even though it's really hard. Hi, my name is Andre and I find that the biggest conflict with my belief is tolerating blasphemy. My name is Teresa, I'm 16 years old and I have no problem with my faith. I feel like um, I feel free to go out in public, to go dancing, to have fun. My name is Brian and the biggest challenge I find is the freedom I get from my parents and also the judgments that I get from other people at school and from my friends. Hi, my name's Sam, I'm 18 years old and the biggest hardship for me probably is um, not having sex before marriage because all your friends are doing it and they, they ask you why you're not doing it and sometimes when you're with girls and they find out you don't want to do it, they assume that you're gay or something like that and it's just that's what makes it really hard for me. Hi, I'm Nathaniel and my biggest conflict in my religious life is not being able to do the things that I want and having to think about the consequences of uh, what happens in the afterlife. Hi, my name is Jonathan. I'm 20 years old and I'm in university. Um, I'm Catholic. And the biggest conflict I find that I have is sometimes not feeling that you fit in with other people. Among friends, I, feel, I find it easy to speak about my faith, but towards other people, uh, it's it's really hard in uh in, in especially the different social groups that you're in. Even in class when uh we're speaking about something, there'd be one or two of us who'd link it to faith and the rest of the class they wouldn't feel right. Faith was something in a way we all had and most of us did go to church, but it wasn't something that we talked about an awful lot. It's quite difficult when when you're in a sort of setting like school and with a lot of other people, it's quite difficult to actually act in a way that is, is a bit different. I mean, I had that when I was um, a secondary school, a long time ago now. Um, there was uh, one lad who was about three years ahead of me, um, and he had, I think he had cerebral palsy, and that meant that his coordination wasn't very good. And I remember in the playground one time, he was um, trying to sort of play tennis and he kept sort of trying to hit the ball and missing it and dropping it and he'd do it again and he'd drop it and all the people were sort of laughing at him. And uh, I felt bad about that. And I, I, w I wasn't sort of joining in making fun of him, but I didn't have the courage to actually sort of go up to him and sort of in some way support him or, you know, uh, do something that would in some way help the situation, which is sort of, uh, it's quite difficult to stand out against the crowd in that way. Why are there the conflicts between people who talk about their faith openly and, and people who, who yeah. dodge them? Films like this are so important and people like you are so important and boys like you, young people like you, throughout Britain and not just in South East London and I possibly throughout the world are facing danger, violence, people who basically don't have any value systems. 
they don't have that innate sense of right and wrong. So they stand up to people and say, don't be afraid. You are allowed to believe. And a, a story I use a great deal in school and have done for years, it's a very, very simple, short story from the Gospel about the mustard seed. How come the smallest seed that could be planted grows into the biggest tree? And I often use that one because for me, in a sense, it's, my, it's, it's, it's how I've become to believe. It could be taken on different levels. On a personal level, you know, I started off being baptised and you get taken to church and you go to Catholic schools and, and then and that, develop, and then that, that sense of faith and wonder and, and an amazement in, and belief inside, of, inside myself. And it says that grows and grows and grows. And sometimes, like the tree, the leaves might fall off, but they come back stronger and stronger. That tree is what we call the kingdom of heaven. Once um, a bishop and a bookie, and they were playing this game of golf. And uh, so the uh, the bookie comes along to the first tee, and he's not very good at golf, really, I have to admit. And he takes a great big swipe at the ball, and he misses it completely. And he says, "Damn it, I missed." And the bishop says, "Oh my gosh, uh, there's this language, this profanity. Is um, you must restrain yourself, exercise the virtue of patience." And, moderation and uh, so they're, they're on the second tee and the bookie takes a huge swipe at the ball misses it completely he says damn it I missed and the bishop says my son my son if you persist in this profanity God will punish you the heavens will open and a bolt of lightning will strike you to the ground and the voice of the Almighty will be heard thundering in the heavens and so they're on the third tee and the bookie takes a swipe at the ball, misses it completely, bends the golf club, earth flying in all directions, and he says, damn it, I missed. And the heavens opened, and a bolt of lightning struck the bishop to the ground, and the voice of the Almighty was heard thundering in the heavens, damn it, I missed. <laughs> 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 yeah.